Hello, I'm Alan Hawes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure PSOC peripherals using our cool new configuration wizard that's part of Modus Toolbox. Let me show you a PSOC application. Every Modus Toolbox application is broken up into multiple projects that are combined by our tool flow to program your development kit. This example follows that design pattern. As you can see, it is split into multiple projects. The one that I will use now is the configuration project, but you can also see projects for the CM4 and the CM0 Plus cores in the PSOC device and the driver projects for each of the cores, but you'll probably never look at them, but they're there if you need to. In the configuration project, there is a file called design.modus, which is the database for the peripheral settings we're about to choose. Double click it to launch the device configurator. This tool is built on Qt and will run on a Mac, a PC, and Linux, and will enable you to build projects for Eclipse as well as other tool chains like IAR. There are five panels in the configurator. I'll go through them one by one. There is the Peripherals tab where you can see all of the available hardware, such as the serial communication blocks. The Pens tab where you can set up GPIOs. Note that the debug pins in green are automatically set up for you. The platforms tab is for the low level items like the debug pins, power choices, and the system clock tree, which is configured to give us a 144 megahertz CPU clock and a 72 megahertz peripheral clock. Here are the dividers we will use to generate useful clock frequencies in the design. Finally, there is the DMA tab, or Direct Memory Access, which lets you control the DMA block in the chip, but I'm not going to be using it today. The idea of the configurator is beautiful, and I want to say thank you very much to the things that were pulled from PSOC Creator. Once you do your configurations, the tool will turn your ideas into C code that you can use for your own project, it's just normal C code, so you'll be able to look and understand what it's all about. I'm going to show you how to set up a UART to talk to the PC through the onboard KitProg3 debugger chip that's installed on the Pioneer kit. The kit silkscreen tells me that I should use port 5, pin 0 for the UART receive, and port 5, pin 1 for the transmit. I'll enable the receive pin here, then set its drive mode to high impedance. Don't worry if you didn't know that it's the correct setting. I'll show you a trick to make the tool do it for you automatically here in a moment. I'll then choose the signal to connect the pin from this drop-down menu. Notice how a little link button appears. When I press that button, it jumps to the serial communication block that's connected to the pin I just selected. I just enable the block and choose its personality. I want to make it a UART. We call this pins in design, and it really beats trawling through the device documentation. I've read the TRM, and maybe you need to, but really life is simpler if you just use the configuration menus. I can also give the SCB a name or an alias to make talking to it easier in your application code. I will do that now. In fact, I'll call it bridge underscore UART. This will remind me that this is the UART for the kit prog3 bridge. And it's also just a good practice because it makes the code more portable should you ever want to print out to another SCB. Here you can see the RX pin that I connected. I'll set up the TX now and show you that little trick I mentioned earlier. Pick the right pin and the link button appears once again. Click that and you go back to the pins tab. Notice that the pin is already enabled and the drive mode is set to strong. I didn't need to just know that the strong drive is right for the UART TX pins, but we're all good engineers, so we did, right? If not, don't worry. The tool helps take care of it for you. Let's finish the UART setup. It defaults to 115200 baud rate, and that's fine, but it needs a clock input. I'll pick the first one. I'll click on the link button to set that up. 
As you can see, it's already calculated that I need to divide my 72 megahertz peripheral clock by 78 to generate the baud rate that I'm trying to get. How easy is that? Thank you again, Oregon and Ukraine, for building this cool thing. That's all the configuration we need to do. I'll save the file and it will update my Modus Toolbox application in the generated source folder with all of the setup C code to configure the device. There's no magic here, just simple C code, which you can easily look at and modify to make your own. All I will then need to do is write the code to turn on the UART and start printing, which I'll do in the next videos. Thank you for watching. I'm very excited about our new tool, Modus Toolbox, and I would like to hear what you think. If you have a technical question, please post them to Cypress Developers Community at community.cypress.com. I watch that site and so does my whole applications team, so you will get quick responses to your questions. If you want to send me a personal note with an observation or a suggestion, my email is alan underscore hawes at cypress.com or tweet me at AskIOTExpert. Thank you very much.